Welcome back to episode 7 in this series on how to go from just dreaming about sailing to full-time cruising. The series is best watched in order, so I have placed them all in a playlist that you may view at your leisure. The link for that playlist is in the description below. By now, we are on to looking at boats, and it's getting very close to making this dream a reality. We are now shopping. It's time to get serious, learn a few things to save you a ton of misery, heartache, and financial stress down the road. Anytime you are even considering purchasing a sailboat, a survey is in order, as well as a rigging inspection. Surveys are no nickel and dime process. You can expect to pay $20 to $30 per foot for the survey alone if looking at 35 foot vessels. That's around $1,050 per survey. As well as in addition to a survey, you can expect to pay around $375 for a four hour rigging inspection. These are both must do aspects of a new to you sailboat purchase. In addition to this, you will need a haul out for the survey as well as a sea trial. So you can tack on as a general rule of thumb around $20 per foot. Again, with a 35 foot vessel, we can add another 700. There is a saying when it comes to sailboats, break out another hundred. It's usually several hundred. The bigger the vessel, the bigger these costs. For the 35 foot sailboat, expect the total to be around $2,100 every time you go through this process. With a 40 foot vessel, it'll be around 2,500 as some yards charge additional once you reach the 40 foot mark. And again, anytime you're serious about purchasing a large sailboat, these are must do aspects of the purchase process. So, instead of running around town like a chicken with a potato for a brain, you want to keep surveys limited to one if possible. In order to accomplish this, we must learn how to do a pre-survey ourselves. If you speak to any surveyor worth his fee, he will tell you that oftentimes he spots deal-breaking issues with a vessel with very little effort or years of experience needed. Oftentimes, just some simple things you can check will determine some large issues and can avoid you paying for a survey on that vessel as you will already have found enough damage to go ahead and pass. Some things to keep in mind when it does come to surveys. Many lenders won't even consider financing a used boat that hasn't been surveyed. Many insurance companies won't consider insuring a used boat that hasn't been surveyed. When it comes to sailboats, hiding serious damage can sometimes be relatively easy. You can look at Expedition Evans as an example of this. Their boat was grounded and sailed for another four years before anyone even realized the entire keel had cracked the interior mold from the hole. A marine survey will also help you as the buyer determine what a fair offer is based on repairs or upgrades that may have been found during the survey. So while the upfront cost is steep, in the long run, it'll 100% help in avoiding larger issues down the road. Oftentimes, you will bump into old salts that are like, I know enough, I don't need a survey, I can survey the boat myself. And that's fantastic, it's also very true. However, if you plan on financing, you must have a survey. In order to have your boat insured, it must have a survey. In order to ever go to a marina and dock your boat in most marinas, you must have insurance. In return, you also must have a survey. So, a survey is an absolute 100% must when it comes to buying sailboats. Our goal here is learn enough to avoid surveying the wrong boat. So what is a survey anyway? When it comes to sailboats, a condition and value survey is the most common type of survey related to the purchase of a new to you sailboat. They are performed when you're buying a used boat. These are comprehensive inspections that include the entire boat and its propulsion systems. Though with very large, expensive boats, a separate engine survey are sometimes also performed. In the case of sailboats, a survey does not include inspecting the rigging. So this is where an additional rigging inspection comes into play. Insurance C&Vs, condition of value, are essentially the same thing. But since they're done solely for insurance purposes, they're generally less comprehensive and stick to a list of specific items the insurance company wants before agreeing to insure the vessel. Now, finding a good surveyor is similar to the previous episode in finding a good broker. Many people choose a boat surveyor via a recommendation from a broker, seller, or lender, while others depend on word of mouth. 
In some cases, lenders or insurance companies maintain lists of approved surveyors they trust. There's one key factor to bear in mind. You should make sure any surveyor you use is a member of either the National Association of Marine Surveyors, known as NAMS, or the Society of Accredited Marine Surveyor, known as SAMS. I will include links for both of these organizations in the description below that you can check out and investigate yourself. Both of these organizations have membership requirements and standards that surveyors have to meet in order to gain accreditation. When you hire a NAMS or SAM surveyor, you know he or she is a professional and will have your best interest in heart. Do not ever, ever, under any circumstances, have the seller of the boat give you a previous survey or have you used their surveyor. Their surveyor will have their interest in mind, not yours. Do not ever use the surveyor that your seller of the vessel you're interested in recommends. I do want to take just a quick break and mention that I have created a complete online sailing community for you, my viewers. This is not a Facebook group or a Patreon messaging back and forth community. This is a live, in real time, entire community of people who are just like you. They all have several questions and are in various stages of either becoming full-time cruisers or are already doing so. In the community, I can chat with you live in real time as well as virtual boat shop with you and help answer any questions you may have about sailing in general or specific boats. I am on the community every day and available to help in any way I can. It is only $10 a month through Patreon, so roughly 30 cents a day. It's not $10 per episode. This way, we can become friends, family, and make lasting memories together while sharing all of our experiences in the world of sailing, as well as helping as many new hopeful sailors as possible. It's cheaper than your Netflix account and gets you closer to your sailing dreams and goals while being a part of a very active community of like-minded people with the same goals and aspirations. So, let's go ahead and put together our own pre-survey personal kit that we can take with us every time we go to look at a vessel and that we ourselves can use to inspect the vessel far before we decide to drop $2,000 to $2,500 on a survey. I will link each of these items in the description below. You do not need to purchase that specific item. Just purchase whatever item that falls into your budget range that will accomplish the same goal. So if it's a brass hammer, just purchase the cheapest one you can get if that's what you can currently afford. There's no need to spend a ton of money on this kit, and you should be able to acquire the entire kit for well under $150. Most of these items you might already have. So what are we going to need for a pre-survey kit? Well, to start, something probably every single one of you has, a cell phone. The reason for a cell phone is you want to take as many pictures as possible of everything. Then when you get home, you can revisit those images. Oftentimes, while out looking at boats, the light changes. So the more pictures you can take, the more things you'll be able to see under different lighting conditions once at home and reviewing the images. You will also want, if possible, a selfie stick. The reason for this is so that you can tuck your phone into certain areas where you cannot reach to get images of places that may have cracks or water damage that you would not otherwise be able to see. Next on the list, you're going to want a moisture meter. The reason for this is we're going to be checking moisture everywhere possible. Certain boats are okay with certain degrees of moisture. We will get into that in the next episode when I discuss how to perform a pre-survey. But a moisture meter is an absolute must for doing your pre-survey. I'll link one down below. But again, whichever one falls into your budget. But absolutely, a moisture meter 100% is needed. Next up, you will also want a multimeter. It will test the voltage along with several other things that will actually be more handy when doing a boat inspection. So. If you can, just go ahead and get the multimeter instead of the voltage meter. Mm -hmm. 
wooden toothpicks. You can generally get them at your grocery store. Just some long wooden skewers will work, but you will absolutely want these as well. This is one you should already have around your house, a flashlight. You'll also want to bring a pad and a pencil with you as well. Take as many notes as you can while you're there. Anything at all you think of while you're there that you like, dislike, might be an issue, something to look at in a picture later, bring a notebook and write it all down. Next up, a pair of binoculars. What you're doing here with the binoculars is looking at the mast and the top of the rigging. If you are lucky and you have a drone, take your drone with you and fly it up to look at the mast and the rigging. We'll get into that. I'll also link one below because nowadays they're relatively expensive, but keep in mind, you do not have to have a drone to do a pre-inspection. Just snag a pair of binoculars if that's the cheaper option for you. Also, grab a tape measure. This is a must have, as well as a hammer. Ideally, a hard plastic hammer or a brass hammer. Just a little one, it doesn't need to be huge, but I prefer the brass hammer. It gives a better ring and the sounds that we're going to be looking for during our pre-survey. But if not a brass hammer, at least a hard plastic hammer. That'll basically take care of your pre-survey kit. With a kit like this, believe it or not, you'll be able to find a ton of damage and save yourself $2,000 to $2,500 only to have the surveyor come back and point out some damage that you could have easily found yourself with just this little toolkit. On the next episode, which will be out tomorrow, I'm going to discuss all the things that you're going to be able to do in a pre-survey to find all the damage you need to find ahead of time. That way, then you can determine where to go from there. If the boat passes your pre-inspection survey, then boom, we're off to hiring a surveyor, sea trial, and we're going from there. So thank you so much for watching. Consider becoming a member of my community. Again, I'm on there live chatting all the time in real time via voice chat and messaging. And I hope to see you tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so, so much for watching.